Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for March 14th, 2025 from the Derby Hill Hawkwatch. When I got out this morning, the full moon was setting and perhaps some of you saw the total lunar eclipse last night. It was a nice calm morning, though a bit chilly with temperatures below freezing. There were a lot of Canada geese and ducks on the water, though they were mostly further east where the lighting was bad because that was towards the rising sun. The highlight of the waterfowl this morning was the continuing Eurasian green-winged teal. And speaking of green-winged teal, here we have some in flight. And here we have a male wood duck in flight, and I love that purple and green iridescence to the face. The count was conducted from the North Lookout today, and although it started quite cold in the morning, the temperatures were quite warm in the afternoon, reaching the low 60s. The winds all day were light out of the southeast, and we had a nice sky for hawk watching, mostly sunny with a thin layer of high clouds. Here is one of 12 kill deer that we had migrate by today. Here we have a flyover finch with a forked tail, a lot of thin striping to the underside of the body, and some yellow in the wings. This is a pine siskin. We had a decent turkey vulture flight today, not as many as yesterday, but around 130 total. Here we have a very small hawk with a long tail. We see a small head with large eyes, giving it a bug-eyed appearance. And looking at the tail feathers, we see they're all about the same length, giving the tip of the tail a very squared-off appearance. This is a sharp-shinned hawk, and the orange barring indicates that it's an adult. Here we have another hawk with a long tail, but this one's a little more lanky looking. It's got a slightly larger head and a slightly longer tail, and we can see the outer tail feathers, which tuck underneath, are shorter than the central tail feathers. And if we look at the back of the neck, known as the nape, we see that this dark cap to the head ends before that nape. Those are all good field marks for Cooper's hawk, and this is an adult because of the orange barring. Here we have a buteo, and we see a dark belly band and dark patagial bars. This is a red-tailed hawk, and the dark trailing edge to the wings and the red tail indicate that it's an adult, and this was one of 59 red-tailed hawks that we had today. We also had a good flight of red-shouldered hawks today, such as this nice adult. We had a total of 53, so yesterday we had more red shoulders than red tails, but today it was the opposite. Here we have a large dark raptor with a relatively small head with golden nape and a somewhat long tail. This is a golden eagle. For comparison, here we have another large dark raptor, but this one has quite a large head and bill and a lot of splotchy white to the underside, including the underside of the body and especially in the wing pit area. Those are good field marks for immature bald eagle. Here's another adult red-tailed hawk. Again, we see that dark belly band and dark patagial bars, and it's an adult because of the dark trailing edge to the wings and a red tail. And this bird's a little bit more heavily marked. You can see it's got a pretty large and dark belly band and maybe even some red coming down from the throat onto the upper breast. Here we have another golden eagle. Take a look at that silhouette. This is classic golden eagle. Golden eagles have small heads, especially compared to bald eagles. On golden eagles, it looks like the tail sticks out a couple times as far as the head sticks out, and you can also see that golden nape shining in the sun. And a lot of times on golden eagles, the wings pinch in as you get close to the body, so it gives the wings kind of a more rounded appearance than you would normally see on bald eagles, which I always think of as looking a bit more rectangular. And also we see some white to the base of the tail and maybe a little bit here in the wings, indicating that this is an immature golden eagle. Here's our third and final golden eagle of the day. Again, note that gold color to the back of the neck. And golden eagles usually hold their wings up into a shallow V or dihedral. Usually not quite as steep as turkey vultures, though. Here's an adult red-shouldered hawk that gave us a really nice look as it passed low overhead. Here's a bald eagle that's almost a full adult, but not quite yet. We can see a little bit of dark where it should be white in the head and tail. And we can see some splotchy white here to the underside of the wings. So give this bird another year or so and it'll look like a full adult. Here we have a small raptor with very pointed wings. We should be thinking falcon. And we see that this bird is very light underneath and has a distinctive facial pattern. This is a male American kestrel. And you'll notice that when they have their tail completely folded, you don't see those orange tail feathers because the outer tail feathers, which fold under the other feathers, have this uh, kind of dark and white patterning. But all the feathers in between are orange. So if they fan the tail, you get a lot of orange. But sometimes when it's folded like this, you don't see that orange at all. 
Here we have another adult red-tailed hawk, and this one's a little less heavily marked. Here we have another Budio. Looking at the overall shape, the wings are a little longer and thinner. We see these dark squares here near the wrist, and we see just overall a very black and white plumage. This is a light morph rough-legged hawk. Here we have a hawk with a long tail, and we see orange barring underneath, so we should be thinking adult of either sharp-shinned hawk or cooper's hawk, but which of the two is it? Well, if we look at the head, we see that it's a relatively small-looking head, and especially it has a bit of a bug-eyed appearance. It looks like big eyeballs on kind of a small head. Another thing to look at with the head is this dark cap on the bird extends all the way across the back of the neck and onto the back. That darker color is completely unbroken. That's a good field mark for sharp-shinned hawk. On a Cooper's hawk, this part right here, the back of the neck, would appear paler, giving it a more capped appearance rather than the hooded appearance that we see on this adult sharp-shinned hawk. Here we have another hawk where again we see a long tail and we see orange barring underneath. So adult sharp-shinned hawk or Cooper's hawk. Well, on this bird, we see less of that bug-eyed appearance to the head. And this bird may be a little hard to judge because it has a full crop also. And that can throw off your judgment because it can make sharp-shinned hawks look bigger headed sometimes. So you have to be careful when the birds have the full crop sticking out like this. And that just indicates that this bird has eaten recently. Another thing we can look at on this bird is the tail feathers. And in this case, we see that the outer tail feathers are quite a bit shorter than the central tail feathers. And overall, this bird looks kind of large and lanky. It looks like a large head, a long tail, long wings held out straight. Those are all good field marks for an adult Cooper's hawk. Here's a bird that came through late in the day and it never came close for good photos, but what we have here should be enough to help identify it. From the speed of the flap, we were able to get a sense of the size of the bird, that it was medium to large, and we see those very pointed wing tips. So we should be thinking large falcon, and we only have one regular large falcon, which is the peregrine falcon. And even in this poor photo quality, you can get a sense of that head pattern that peregrine falcons show. Here we have another pointy winged raptor, this one quite small and very pale underneath. This is another male American kestrel. And as we were packing up at the end of the day and we had a visitor stop by to tell me how much she enjoys these videos, we had this nice adult male northern harrier cruise through really low. We had a decent number of visitors today. Here's a photo that I took randomly at one point during the day, but I think there were even more people than this there at one point. And with the favorable winds tomorrow, I think we'll have probably even more people, especially with it being the weekend. So there could be a pretty good crowd tomorrow. Taking a look at the eBird report today, we had 64 species. We had three species today that were new for the season. Those were pied-billed grebe on the lake in the morning, a barred owl that called during the afternoon during the hawk watch, and then Kim and I went out at dusk and picked up American woodcock, bringing us to a total of 86 species for the season. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, Today we had 129 turkey vultures, 5 bald eagles, 5 northern harriers, 15 sharp-shinned hawks, 15 cooper's hawks, 53 red-shouldered hawks, 59 red-tailed hawks, 2 rough-legged hawks, 3 golden eagles, 6 American kestrels, and 1 peregrine falcon for a total of 293 migrating raptors. That brings us to a season total of 1,211 migrating raptors. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, it's looking really great with partly cloudy skies, a high of 64 and winds south-southeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. So great wind speed and direction. It should be another good day out at Derby Hill. And hopefully with those stronger winds, the raptors will be flying earlier than they have the past two days. And with the sunshine, should be thermals as well. So should be a really nice day to be out. I think we'll have quite the crowd, especially with it being the weekend. And keeping that in mind, the only parking that's available at the North Lookout right now is the gravel lot, since there's still snow and the grass is very muddy. If that lot fills up, you can park down at the bottom of the hill in the lot on Sage Creek Drive and then just walk up the road to the Hawk Watch. For Sunday, it had been looking really rainy, but really they've shifted the rain only for the 
later afternoon. So it seems like we have the possibility of maybe getting some activity in the morning, although the winds are going to be quite strong. It's a good direction again, south, southeast, but 20 to 30 miles per hour. So really strong southerly winds. Could be an interesting day. We'll be out there to see what we can see. And then for Monday, it's getting colder again, cloudy early, and then partial clearing with temps in the mid-30s, winds west-northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So we'll probably be down at the south lookout for Monday, and it should be probably a slower day than we've been having recently. All right, another great day of hawk watching at Derby Hill today. I really enjoyed seeing the continued large flight of adult red-shouldered hawks and red-tailed hawks, and we had a really good variety of raptors overall. And... Just a great day of birding with beautiful weather. Had a lot of people out today, and I think we'll have a lot of people again tomorrow to enjoy another amazing day of hawk watching here at the Derby Hill Bird Observatory in Mexico, New York, USA. I hope you can join us soon or follow along virtually. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.